Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization, RP Plus, Hypertrophy Concepts, and Tools 23, Phase Potentiation of Frequency. Let's take a look at what's in store. Quick phase potentiation review. You should be watching this after lectures 21 and 22, so it should be very fresh in your mind as far as what phase potentiation is for. We're gonna talk about frequency needs at the beginning of a block, frequency needs changing as the block progresses, block being like three mesocycles or so in a row, an issue with high frequency and sustainability, and then how frequency should change over the block, and then of course, what frequency should look like in the maintenance phase to really round out our holistic uh, discussion of what frequency should look like over something like the macro cycle, which is to say a few training blocks, at least one actual accumulative training block, and then a maintenance training block. All right. So phase potentiation, remember each phase has its own goals, but each phase also sets up the next phase. So anytime we want to design uh, a good training program, we want to make sure that anything we're doing right now works well for growing muscle now, but also is attuned to how do we grow muscle in the next phase. So there needs to be some sort of structure to lead in. Think of this as like an appetizer main course dessert sort of thing. Order matters and your appetizer can be the greatest thing in the world, but if it fills you too much for your main course, it kind of ruins the meal experience. And if the dessert is paired poorly to the main course meal, then it kind of is, it falls at kind of a dud. So you want everything to sort of work off of each other, okay? And how does this apply to frequency and hypertrophy training? You've already seen it apply to volume and we've already seen it apply to load. We're gonna see here in frequency today that there's a really, really cool synthesis of concepts that occurs and makes this face potentiation idea and hypertrophy actually pretty cool. So and there's some debate between various fitness experts on, you know, is periodization required for hypertrophy? It's absolutely not required to get some hypertrophy, actually quite a lot. Uh, but I think for optimization of hypertrophy, if you really want to give it your best effort, and you know all these things intellectually, eh, you know, periodization in the sense that people understand it to be the use of phase potentiation, which is a big part of periodization, uh, really does seem to have some merits to it, at least something to think about. So frequency needs at the beginning of the block. When you are starting a block, now cycle one, you're fresh after maintenance phase or active rest phase, your per session minimum effective volumes are very low. You can do like three or four sets per session per muscle group and grow super great, awesome. Your per week minimum effective volumes are very low as well, which is really, really good. And recovery between sessions at the beginning of the block probably takes quite a long time because you grow more muscle after any exposure of training because you're so sensitive to muscle growth. After you do any one session, the muscle growth curve lasts for quite a long time at the beginning of a training block. At the end of meso three, it might last for a very short time because you're pretty resistant to anabolism at that point. In addition to that, uh, you have a higher percentage of faster twitch behaving fibers and a lot of the loading you're doing is heavier relatively. So, uh, you know, your fatigue reduction doesn't occur very quickly because faster fibers don't drop fatigue very fast between sessions and heavier loading also doesn't drop fatigue very fast. So you, uh, lower frequency actually makes a little bit more sense because each session can be minimal in size. It can really mess you up and take quite a while for you to heal for your next productive, relatively faster twitch oriented, relatively heavier weight session. In addition to that, your work capacity is dog shit, which is kind of a good thing from the last phase of active recovery or maintenance, your work capacity has come down quite a bit. So you don't even have the capacity to do a ton of work, uh, which is means to justify a super high frequency environment. There's only so much work you can do per week and your recovery ability really, really pairs well with your work capacity. So you just can't recover from super high frequencies, nor do you need to do them. Thus, to grow a lot of muscle in the first block, at the beginning, sorry, the first meso, at the beginning of a block of training, of three meso sequence, you simply don't need very high frequencies at the beginning of a block. You just don't, right? Now, as the block progresses, as you go from meso one to meso two and meso two to meso three, frequency needs may change for a few reasons. Your per session minimum effective volumes and MRVs increase for sure, but your per week minimum effective volumes and MRVs definitely increase. And if you have, you know, certain sessions in number, let's say three sessions, you do an average of eight reps and then, oh, sorry, eight sets. So three sessions, eight sets, and your MRV is 24, great, that fills you right up. But if your MRV is like 30, gee whiz, you know, you're gonna have to increase how much volume you do per session and there's only so much you can do that, you might need to add sessions. To that exact point, the MAVs per session might not increase much. You still may get your maximum adaptive volume later in the mesocycle and later in the block 
at roughly sort of eight to 10 sets per session, but your MRVs for the week uh, and your MEVs go up. So in order to chase doing as much training as you can productively, MRV, and in order to do as much training as you minimally need to grow, MEV, you might need to raise your training volume, but your M MAV, your maximum adaptive volume per session might just not change much. So just like with the last example, if you're doing like eight sets per session and all of a sudden your MEV is like 20 where it was 15, gee, you know, you're pretty close to your MEV with just eight sets per session for the week. If you added frequency, you could really bust up your volume without touching per session MAV. So each session you still do eight, but now you do four sessions instead of three, that's 32. That means even if your MEV is in the 20s now, you're well clear of it. And if your MRV is in the 30s, you're getting closer to it. Both of those are good things, right? And another piece of sort of good news, your recovery between sessions becomes more rapid as you train from one meso to the meso to the meso for a couple of reasons. Your uh, fibers, as mentioned before, convert to a more slower twitch variants, which tend to recover faster. Sort of a uh, silver lining there. Your work capacity goes up incredibly because you've been doing incrementally higher volumes for multiple weeks and then multiple months at this point. Your work capacity goes up, which is good because you can actually do the work, right? Your technique improves, thus your efficiency improves, and you can do more work effectively without straining joint structures or getting really tired and so on and so forth. And thus you can do more frequency as the training block progresses and actually benefit. So if you did a ton of frequency in block, uh, the first mesocycle of the block, you might not even be able to pull it off all that well. Whereas if you do it in the, more frequency in the second and more in the third, you might be realizing that all of the uh, sort of structures and all of the limitations are going to your favor and actually letting you perform higher frequencies when you need them, right? So not only do you need a bit more frequency as the block progresses for the best gains, you can usually support it better as uh, your frequency, uh, as the block wears on, your potential for doing frequency and pulling it off actually goes up, which is a really, really good thing. Now, it doesn't go up in all capacities. Ideally, joint and connective tissue stress would fall during the block and then we could really do high frequencies, but not all things line up. But most of them do line up pretty well, uh, and especially when you consider needs versus abilities. Could you do higher frequency in the first uh, block? Yes but uh, you might not need to, and you really need to in the, uh, sorry, in the first meso, and uh, keep blocking that up, my apologies. In the first meso, you can do high frequency potentially, but you don't need it at the very least. And then in the last uh, meso, you might not be ideal for higher frequency, but pretty good at it and you need it. So it's kind of a, a double-edged sword there in the same direction. Now, that whole issue with, okay, you could do higher frequency in the first uh, mesocycle, you just do higher frequency in the whole block. A higher frequency is really, really great, right? Here's the problem. Earlier in the block, meso one, for example, you don't actually need higher frequency. You just can't benefit from it much because your cap on recovery and your minimum effective volume are so low that you can fill in all of your growth effects with relatively low frequencies. You just don't get a big bang for your buck. Adding frequency works if you're already used to a lower frequency, but you're not used to a low frequency yet. You're still milking it out, right? So, you know, why do it, right? But maybe you do it anyway because it's more effective, okay? Uh, maybe even just by a tiny little amount. Well, later in the block, you can benefit even more high for high frequency. So if there's any variation of novelty, and sometimes they say high frequency is better just because of novelty, that's not true exactly, but novelty definitely helps. Um, at least you want to save the higher frequencies for later in the block when you really, really need them, not just use them all the time. But there's a better argument because Higher frequencies create much more cumulative fatigue if you use them than lower frequencies through at least two ways. One, higher frequencies uh, impact joint and connective tissue recovery more than lower frequencies do. They're less sustainable. So over the course of applying high frequency training for a long enough time, joint and connective tissue recovery starts to really, really be limiting versus if you do lower frequency all the time, you can train for way longer with joints and connective tissues being just fine. And Another thing about high frequencies is one of the ways in which they benefit you, they let you grow, is they allow you to do more volume in the week. But that more volume means you get closer to your weekly systemic MRV. Remember, like you, your individual muscles may recover uh, from four sessions just fine or two sessions just fine, but two extra sessions a week impacts the system that much more. So all of a sudden you can make this Napoleonic plan of I'm gonna train 14 times a week with two a days and three a days, you get through one week and you're like, oh my God, my body system can't recover from this much training. So if you do 
you know, when you don't really need it, if you do the higher frequency, it might end up being that by the second or third mesocycle, you're systemically overreached. So it's just not sustainable from that perspective, right? So we can look at higher frequency as an effective tool, but an expensive tool that works ideally for a limited time before lower frequencies have to be done to recover because they are more sustainable and they don't have all these fatiguing effects. So, where do we go from here? Well, we don't seem to really need to come close to optimization, higher frequency in the beginning of the block, but we really seem to be able to benefit from it a lot. And because volume requirements and volume opportunities rise as the block goes on, uh, higher frequencies might be something we can not only benefit more from as we go from meso to meso to meso, but something that we can absolutely benefit from because it becomes almost required to be the thing that provides overload for us. So what we can do there is add frequency as the block progresses. We can start at lower frequencies and work to higher ones, uh, both as needed, like, okay, well, clearly, you know, we're just not getting a huge hit off of 16 sets of back anymore. I think it's time to move up to a higher volume and we can't do it with two sessions. Time to do three and as sustainable. You say, okay, can I do three sessions of back now that I've maxed out two? Like, yeah, totally. Joints connective issues are fine. If I just choose exercise and loading ranges intelligently, I can absolutely add a third session. So if it's sustainable and if it's needed, then you can add frequency. And that's huge. And we're going to come back to that in a little bit. You don't just add frequency proactively and be like, oh, I'm going to do everything four times a week, then five, then six. Like that might not actually work out because it might not be needed, uh, nor might it, nor might it not be sustainable, right? And then what that means is we do our highest frequencies and thus our least sustainable ones at the last mesocycle of a block, uh, and then move into active rest or maintenance where all that crazy fatigue is brought down, which is a really good thing. If we did higher frequencies every single meso of a block, we would never finish the block or not nearly as productively. And in order to make this process more effective, we can make our higher frequencies more sustainable by adding less systemically fatiguing exercises as we go, or fewer of them rather, to be good at the English language. We can add lighter loads and moderate loads more than heavy loads. Uh, and the best of all worlds, we can just do some combination of both. So I think let's look at some examples of that, right? So frequency changes over the block might look like this. For triceps in each mesocycle of the block, you might go from two sessions of triceps a week in the first mesocycle to three sessions in the second and then four sessions in the last mesocycle. All right. In, let's say, in meso one, you know, you're doing two heavy compound exercises for triceps, close grip benches and dips, for example. In meso two, you might add... Um, 10 to 20 rep skull crushers. So like you used to train Monday, Thursday triceps and you did dips and close grip benches Monday, Thursday, all right? Dips on Monday, close grip benches on Thursday. What you might do in mesocycle two is now you train for your triceps Monday, Wednesday, Friday, dips Monday, just like before, close grip benches Wednesday this time. But remember you're healing faster because you're more adapted, higher work capacity, slower fiber type uh, split, so on and so forth. And then on that Friday, you add... 10 to 20 rep skull crushers, more of an isolation movement, not super uh, taxing on joints, not super systemically fatiguing, and it's a uh, higher rep range, so it's totally possible to do. And then lastly, you, in meso three, in the last meso, might do you know another session on Saturday for triceps, and so that's four sessions a week, and you add sets of 20 to 30 in uh, cable tricep extension drop sets. So, you know, set of 20 to 30, and then you drop a little, and then another set of five to 10, drop five to 10, drop five to 10. So what that ends up happening is that exercise is very not systemically fatiguing, really locally fatiguing to the triceps. It's much lighter weight, so it's not a joint problem. Can you sustain that four time a week tricep training frequency? In other words, can you hit your triceps Friday, Saturday hard, and come back on Monday and do them hard again, and then Wednesday and then Friday? The answer is no, but it doesn't need to be sustainable, but for one mesocycle, and then you turn it down and turn it off. This is just an example, some notes to generalize this. Some muscles might start at a very high frequency and go to a crazy high frequency. For example, rear delts, forearms, sometimes biceps, can be trained very hard and recover just very, very quickly. So they can start a mesocycle at three or four X per week training and end up getting to five or six X per week on the last mouse cycle. Nothing wrong with that. It's per the muscle and its ability to recover and requirements for stimulus. There's no religion here, no dogma. On the other hand, just the same way, some muscles might start at two X a week or even one X a week and get up to, you know, 
two to four X a week, maybe two to three X a week in some cases. Hamstrings are a, a really good example. Traps are a good example in a well-rounded program with well-developed traps because other, you know, all of your back work, some of your leg work, and all of your shoulder work, specifically laterals and upright rows and things like that, hit your traps anyway. You might start with traps at zero direct work in meso one, one time a week direct work in meso two, and two time a week direct work in meso three. So it, th this whole two, three, four idea is just an example and a pretty decent average. Because remember, in a lot of the RP stuff, we say the average frequency for the human body for muscle groups trained per week should be between two and four on average. But there are for sure notable deviations from that. The other example there is hamstrings. You know, sometimes your hamstrings just only recover so quick from anything north of like three or four sets. Like four or five sets of leg curls just takes you two or three days to recover from, period. And two or three sets of stiff like a so good mornings just take you three to four days to recover. And there's just no way around that. So sometimes some muscles don't need a frequency addition every meso. For example, if you did meso two, leg curls in the 10 to 20 range and stiff legged deadlifts in the 5 to 10 range and you want to take that into meso 3 and you're like, hmm, where can I add frequency for hamstrings? The answer might be like, okay, you're doing like five sets of leg curls on your peak workout for meso 2 and four sets of stiff legged deadlifts and you're just like sore in a barely non-overlapping matter. Like the morning that you have to do hamstrings again, like that last night they just healed from last thing. What the hell are you gonna add frequency for? Where? Also, why? You're gonna come in and do two sets of some shit and then leave? That's almost like you have to spend more time warming up during the week than actually training. Sometimes muscles take so long to heal that even with very reasonable volumes, we're not talking about 15 sets per session, five sets per session, there's just no more work you can squeeze in. You don't need that super high frequency. I mean, ideally, the best frequency is one time a week or zero times a week. It'd be great if you didn't have to train anything at all. So sometimes people get into this, and I've been in this mindset where like, okay, I'm gonna drive the frequency right? I need the frequency, so I'm going to figure out ways to train more frequently. And you end up just having weird, shitty, mostly warm up, one working set workouts in order to dr uh, drive a high frequency. It's pointless. If you can get a decent workout with just a, a few sets, four, five, six sets per session, and you can get away with two times a week frequency, holy crap, you just won the lottery. That's really awesome. To that exact point, frequency needs to be modulated over the block, meso to meso, meso on an as needed basis and an as tolerated basis, required and sustainable, okay? I need to do more volume because this volume isn't really stimulating me and clearly I can do more and I'm able to recover. And the sustainability is I'm able to recover. My joints and connective tissues are not gonna really ramp up and, and go crazy on me in a couple of weeks. If those two factors are met, then yes, you can add frequency. But if one or both are not met, there's no hard rule of must add frequency every meso. No such thing at all. Just begin on the lower end to your needs at the first mesocycle. In the second meso, evaluate to see if you need to and can add frequency and go from there slowly, step by step by step and never, ever, ever, Justin Bieber refuted this uh, postulate, of course, by saying never say never, which he contradicted himself right in there in that sentence, by the way. Take that, Biebs. Uh, almost never have rap rapid and radical escalations in frequency from meso to meso. Don't do some shit. You know, people get excited. I've been there where you're like, man, I used to train bicep curls once a week and I went to two times a week. This last meso, my shit blew up. Six time a week bicep curl time. Do not do that. That is a real good recipe for increasing injury risk substantially. So if you did two time a week biceps last meso and you meet the condition of it is both sustainable for at least the next meso and you're in need of doing it, like your biceps aren't just sore the entire time, there's no need to increase uh, your frequency, then try three time a week. Don't just go straight to four or some crazy shit like that. Lastly, how do we treat the maintenance phase? Well, good news. Muscle conservation, which is the primary goal of maintenance, occurs at incredibly low frequencies. One time a week is more than enough for every single muscle group. It doesn't even have to be direct work. If you shoulder press, like with a relatively close grip, for like four sets once a week, your triceps in any actual myofibrillar content will almost certainly not reduce notably or at all within a month, two or three months, possibly even ever. They just won't get smaller. They might lose a little glycogen, lose a little fullness. Within like two weeks of doing more tricep volume for them more frequently, they're gonna be as big as they've ever been and maybe even bigger. So it's nothing to worry about. However, especially for beginners and intermediates, two time per week is okay in maintenance because it can allow for more practice with the movements, for more strength enhancement and uh, to better your technique and so on and so forth. That being said, any frequency per muscle higher than two times a week on maintenance is just 
pointlessly doing more frequency, pointlessly doing more work, perhaps from a volume basis, actually interfering with the maintenance by keeping volumes too high. And if not keeping volumes too high, just re-irritating the joints and connective tissues too often, leave shit the fuck alone on your maintenance phase. Come in the gym for every muscle group twice a week, do a very minimal amount of volume, like something like five sets per session or even fewer, two or three. That means, yeah, a maintenance phase could look like high bar squats Monday for four sets and then front squats Thursday for four sets. And that's literally all the quad volume you do for an entire month. That's awesome because you're going to be praying and begging and your body's going to be so sensitive to volume when you come back. What you don't want to do is end a maintenance phase and be like, man, I train everything so often and so hard on this maintenance phase. That's not a maintenance phase anymore. Yeah, sure. You just maintained your muscle because you weren't modulating your calories, but you wasted a huge ability to drop a ton of fatigue and really resensitize for gains. Once you start your next block, then you can start with decent frequencies again. Instead of one or two time a week on maintenance, you can start with two or three as needed to provide really good hypertrophy. But remember, you're sensitive to growth and you're not optimally tailored to high frequencies yet. Start at a lower end as needed and as sustainable. Build into the next meso potentially or keep the same and as needed, if needed and if sustainable, increase frequency once again in the third, back to maintenance to drop and so on and so forth. Folks, I think that's it for the face potentiation series. See you next time for lecture 24.